Hello, this is Jim Michaels with the Hickory Heights Church of Christ in Lewisburg, Tennessee. I'd like to share a brief message with you from the Word of God today. You know, we've been noticing over the past uh, two or three lessons of the effort that men go to to try to explain away that baptism has anything whatsoever to do with the saving of one's soul. Now, certainly we're not trying to contend that baptism alone saves, separate and apart from the grace of God or the mercy of God or the sacrifice of Jesus or our faith or our repentance or our confession, but it does play a part in the saving of our souls because it's when we're baptized into the death of Christ, the death that it was there that Christ shed his blood that we received the benefits of that blood. But we've noticed how people, the extent that some people will go to try to explain away uh, baptism. For instance, we've noticed the, the thief on the cross. You know, there's a lot of people that will look at the thief and say, well, he wasn't baptized, and yet Jesus said today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. But we noticed in our studies that he lived and died under the law of Moses, and not he wasn't under the law of Christ. In our last lesson, we noticed Acts 2 and verses 38, where it was there that he said to repent and be baptized to every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The word for there is their contention was that it meant uh, because of, because sins were already forgiven. But we noticed also in our studies that there was a parallel in Matthew 26, for instance, in verses 28, it says, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Same Greek expression. We know that Jesus' blood wasn't shed because sins were already remitted, but because uh, they needed to be remitted. And so his blood was shed so that they could be forgiven and reconciled to God. It amazes me the extent that some people go to try to explain away baptism. How could he express it any clearer when he said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved? That there are two things, and that's in that verse, that's necessary for salvation. Could he express it any clearer? He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Or even in Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. Or in Acts 22, verses 16, where he says, and Ananias tells Saul, he said, Saul, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized, washing away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Could that be any clearer, stated any clearer than that? Or of what Peter said, I like the King James in 1 Peter 3, verses 21. He said, the like figure wherein to baptism doth also now save us. It either saves us or it doesn't. Now, who are you going to listen to? Well, let me encourage you to listen to the Bible. And if I believe, repent, confess, and am baptized, I can be saved by the grace of God. Thank you for listening. Hope the lesson has been of some benefit to you.